Can you tap your neighbor? Say neighbor. The love of God towards me is unshakable. All right, Hoya, shake your neighbor. Say it's unshakable. E.T., are you ready? Avestas, are you ready? Let's go. One, two, one, two. Your love. You said. sit in God's presence this morning. Turn to your left and turn to your right and say to your neighbor, you're welcome to church this beautiful morning. If they're not answering, you look to the other side and say, welcome to church this beautiful morning. Shake their hands, give them a side hug, you know, and just connect with somebody this morning. And for those that are joining us on the online space, we welcome you specially to church this beautiful morning. Yes, please let me appreciate them. Yes, 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 yes. If you are on Instagram, we we'll love you. If you're on YouTube, we we'll love you. Mixelar, you know, whatever platform you're joining us on this morning, we trust that the power of God that is here this morning would also touch you in a special way in Jesus' name. Amen. And today is a very special Sunday because we are celebrating the birthday of our father, Pastor Bolaji Dowu. Is somebody excited? Okay, great, 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 great. If you have done a shout out to him on Instagram or on any of the social media platforms, can I see your hands up? You've done a shout out to him already? Okay, great. Please give yourself a round of applause. You know, the least we can do in this season is to just let him know that he has been a blessing to you. So if you are yet to do that, please go ahead, you know, record a video talking about how he has been a blessing to you as a person. And also next week, Sunday, it's also a special Sunday. Who knows what's happening next week Sunday? Easter Sunday. Yes, yes. The time we get to really celebrate, you know, the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So next week Sunday would be a good time for you to also invite people 
to church, right? So please, um, if you want to make a commitment that you're going to bring somebody to church next week, Sunday, can I see your hands up? You are going to bring somebody, nobody, wow. Really? If you are going to bring somebody to church next week, Sunday, can I see your hands up? I am challenging you actually to say, you know what? As we celebrate Easter, there is one person I just want to bring to church to come and experience the life of Jesus. And please, as you do that, I pray that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Of, of course, we also know that NLP continues throughout the week, right? Starting again tomorrow, 6.30. Please, if you have not been joining, you know, that is where testimonies happen. You know, we get to hear a lot of testimonies from the prayers that we offer. And I want to encourage you to be a part of it. Don't just join by yourself, but also encourage somebody to join. You know, the same way you recommend different things to people that you have experienced, I think now is a good time for you to also begin to what? Recommend NLP prayer platform to people. People share their pains with you. Have you thought about it that maybe the next level prayer should be where you should be recommending to them? As you are giving people other advices, I want you to make it a commitment that this week I'm going to bring people to next level prayer. As you do that, the Lord will also bless you in the name of Jesus. Right, so at this point, I will ask that we fix our eyes on the screen as we continue the service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Attention. Please pay attention. Next Level Prayers continues this week. The direction for this week is gates will open. Join the prayers from Monday to Friday by 6.30 a.m. Have you registered for the NLP conferences coming up this year in Canada, USA and London? If you haven't, kindly scan the barcode showing on the screen. Do you have family and friends in the UK, Canada and USA that you would love to invite for NLP conferences? Then this is the perfect time to invite them. Kindly scan the QR code to get them invited. Find out what it means to make a difference friends with Harvesters and connect to the opportunities available at Harvesters to live out your purpose and serve others by using your God-given gifts. Join our Growth Track Step 4 themed Join the Executive Team. This fourth class holds right after the service. Please don't miss it. The marriage preparation course is ongoing and you can join in to learn how you can have a successful and thriving marriage. Please scan the barcode on the screen to register. It is that time where we celebrate our expectant moms, equip them with necessary knowledge and uphold them with prayer. If you are an expectant mother and join us this saturday the 30th of march across all campuses the barcode for registration is on the screen our special spontaneous worship is coming up on good friday 29th of march 2024 and it is going to be an incredible and soul lifting experience that you won't want to miss come and celebrate the resurrection of our lord jesus at harvesters on the 31st of march 2024 the service will feature extensive teachings on christ's death burial resurrection and ascension also there will be healing deliverances and impartation in Invite everyone with any kind of challenges to be touched with the resurrection power of Christ. Moms, dads, aunts, uncles, and guardians, Easter Vaganza is here. It is an Easter special for your kids and teens holding on the 31st of March at the Kids Zone. There will be lots of fun activities, games, bouncy castles, gifts, delicious treats, Easter trivia, and an Easter tour to creatively retell the Easter story, the meaning, and the essence. Your kids won't want to miss out. It will be an unforgettable time travel adventure for your children. Also, you can bring their friends along. Harvester Skill Acquisition Program HSAP will hold in Aja, Bagada, Ikorodu, Alimosho, Ibadan, and Abuja on the 16th to 19th of April 2024. Registration is currently going on and you can register at your campus. Mark your calendars for April 5th. The Global Leaders and Workers Vigil is set to ignite the aspirations of leaders and future leaders alike. This impactful event promises to be an unforgettable experience. Be there to be inspired and empowered. After an incredible six weeks of our foundation course program the graduation ceremony is finally here join us on april 7th to honor our graduates those who have immersed themselves in the impactful foundational course and deepens their understanding of god kindly visit the information desk on your exit for more information feedback is important to us and we would like to do better please let us know what and how we are doing kindly scan the feedback qr code on the screen this is the end of the announcement do enjoy the rest of the service in january we gather together and be praised we fasted, called on God, and He answered. In February, we did so too. But we know that there is more. There is an endless depth of answered prayers to explore. Stop praying as if God is your problem. He said, call upon me, and I will answer you. If you invite me to pray, then you must answer my prayers. God is not done with us yet, and we will not remain complacent. I was lying on my bed, and I was praying, like, this last day of fasting, I'm going to get my deliverance. I'm going to be made whole. Pastor B said something. He said, there's a lady lying down on the bed. You have 
have a tummy, it's not fibroid, it's not PCOS. The doctor cannot even detect what's wrong with you. In the name of Jesus, I cast it out of you right now. I like, I feel like I wanted to go to the toilet. And I sat on the toilet, the first clot of blood came out. From that day. Grace, 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 this is this my is story. Join us for a three-day special online fasting and prayers. We will be going live on Facebook at Pastor Bology Ido, Instagram at Bology ID, YouTube at Harvesters TV, and Mixelar at Harvesters. As we receive answers to all our prayers, starting by 6.30 a.m. every day from Monday 1st to Wednesday 3rd of April 2024. Don't miss out on this. We know our God will answer. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the, Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so with the same conviction that we have in our heart, I want us to stand up this morning for prayers. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. I want us to rise up on our feet this morning as we begin to pray. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Let us rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us stand up as soldiers of Christ. Praise God. So, um, you know, yesterday I was thinking about Pastor Bolaj's life and how he has been a blessing to me. And in that moment, I remembered, I think last year, where he had the experience where he was shot at. I don't know how many of us remember that story, right? And in that moment, I was just wondering that if that shot had actually hit him, what would have happened? You know, and in that moment, I began to think about how good our God has really been. You know, with the same thoughts in our mind, I want us to lift up our voice of adoration and praises unto our God this morning for preservation of life over our senior pastor, Pastor Bolaji. Let us thank God for grace that has been made manifest upon his life. You know, is an epitome of grace upon grace. We thank the Lord for how far he has brought him. Lift up your voice and worship the name of the Lord. If indeed Pastor Bolaja has been a blessing to you, now is the time to thank the Lord for all that he has given unto you as a gift. You know, the Lord packaged Pastor and gave him to us as a gift. Let us begin to worship the name of the Lord. Father, we worship you, we exalt your name, we thank you for the gift of Pastor Bolaji. We thank you for life. We thank you for grace. We thank you for anointing. We thank you for capacity. We thank you for leadership. We thank you for everything that you have equipped him with, even to be able to deliver unto us. We thank you for all that you have packaged into him. We thank you because you have set him aside, even as a vessel in your hand. We thank you because you have designed him as a vessel unto honor. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. We thank you, Father, because you have brought us here, able to be blessed by his ministry. We thank you for life. We thank you for life. We thank you for life. The Bible says that if not for the Lord that is on our side, what then shall we say? If not for the Lord that is on his side, what then shall we say? When the enemy came like a flood, the Lord raised a standard against them. We worship your name, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now, quickly, I want us to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 19. The Bible said the Lord was with Samuel. You know, I, I, I want us to substitute that with what? Pastor Bolaji. The Lord was with Pastor Bolaji as he grew up. And he let none of his words fall to the ground. Hallelujah. Our prayer this morning is that from this moment forward, none of Pastor Bolaji's words will fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. You know what that means is that every of his prophecy will come with power and with might to perform everything that is spoken. That as he speaks into your life, it is backed up by power. Let us begin to pray in the name of Jesus. That as he grew, he will grow in strength. He will grow in capacity. And his words will never fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. His words will be backed up with power in the name of Jesus. Hey, Zimana, Katali, and Rosa. 
Ifrono moko toli rakista anemia. Ipa kuli makuri handa zakataya bala. Ezifro moko makuna mahande. Ipa no shakili makuna zanda hande. We lift our past onto your hands, O God. That it will move from grace to grace, from strength to strength. Anointing doubled in the name of Jesus. As it grows, O God. His words will never fall to the ground. In the name of Jesus. His prophecies are backed up by power. In the name of Jesus. As he ministers to the sick, they are healed in the name of Jesus. As he prophesies into people's life, life goes with it in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In the same way we are going to pray for ourselves. That the same grace that is upon the life of our set man that has brought him to this point uh, that made it seem as though he knows no lack that that same grace will be made abundant in your life in the name of Jesus uh, that in this season uh, the Lord will supply all of your needs uh, according to his riches and glory in the name of Jesus uh, let us lift up our voice and pray that this week as I step into this week oh God uh, you are supplying all of my needs according to your glory in the name of Jesus uh, Boundaries are lifted in front of me. In the name of Jesus. Um, we walk into this week um, with grace in the name of Jesus. Um, we walk into this week um, with favor in the name of Jesus. Um, we have much more than we need um, in the name of Jesus. Um, we are empowered by God uh, for every good work. Uh, and every one of our heart desires, uh, they come to speedy manifestation uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, Father, we worship your name. Uh, for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen can you just lift your hands and just bless the name of the Lord come on let your worship rise to you was written about me to do your will, oh God. I've come in the volume of the book, it was written about me to do your will. 
Come on, raise your voice. Eva, oh, just a church. Eva, oh, Eva, oh, you all about the love.
I see Jesus seated on the throne. I behold the Lamb of God, Shakelapa, seated on the throne. Rada Bakaskope, I see Jesus. Elia Kamana Kosa, Erada Bakesulape, Ulakia Pila Pesaya. I see the Lord, I see the Lord. When the King of Glory comes in, he said, The coming of the King comes with the trump of the trumpet. Oh, Shaila, can you see your King? We see, we see, we see, we see. Oh, Shaila, I, oh, I see. Father, we once again thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you because of your anointing that is available to teach and preach your word in such a way that everyone will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, come into a deeper place in Christ Jesus, and receive solution and practical wisdom for daily living. Thank you because of the utterance available by the Spirit of God so that we can speak freely the mysteries of Christ. Thank you because your anointing is upon this mortal clay that we can speak clearly the divine mysteries in Christ Jesus. Well, thank you because no one that comes into the service will go back the same again. Once again, personally, I'm grateful because of adding a year 
of strength, of life, of health, of progress. Looking back at my journey, I'm boldly able to say, if the Lord had not been on our side, where would we have been? But thank God that he that watches over Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. For the Lord is our helper, the Lord is our keeper. Thank you for being our keeper. Thank you for showing me and our spiritual family mercy. We are grateful, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, you may have your seat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope you are well. I hope you are well. So firstly, before I start teaching today, I want to say a big thank you for all of the love, the greetings, the gifts shown to me on the occasion of my birthday, which is today. I know that a lot of it are still coming. I'm so, so grateful. Glory to God. I'm so grateful. Thank you for... It's wonderful to belong to a loving family like this. It's wonderful to belong to a loving family like this. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Just to let you know, um, I'm making about three or four posts on my birthday on Instagram, Twitter, social media. Um, if, you put, if you're able to retweet, put comment, I'm choosing five people to have dinner with amongst all the people that put their comment. The five most viral people, I'm just both. So I hope that it can be one of you to do that if you're interested. Amen. Amen. Blessing is going that I must win it. <laughs> so that I must win it. You know, praise God. That's that that's something great. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word of God today? Yes, next Sunday, next Sunday is Easter. Next Sunday is Easter. And um, it's gonna be a very great service. So I hope that you get to invite your friends to come and join us for Easter service. I want to thank all of our leaders, um, Pastor Femi George, Pastor Bolu, Pastor Bolaji John, you know, for my Able assistant Elizabeth and uh, uh, Pastor and training, uh, what you you know for working very hard to make all of this all of this happen. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Where have I missed also choir? Thank you, Hallelujah. Spiral, you were trying to imitate me, but I don't know if that sounds like me. <laughs> Spiral said, "I said everybody look up here, look up here." Yeah, because most of them you guys look down, so I have to ask you to look up. I don't know what you're looking now at, you know, but I guess you're looking at the Bible. Praise God, Hallelujah! But it's good. It's good to hear the stories. It's good to hear, even people that you don't know. You know, um, Vicky James' mom is over there, and um, you know, on Friday I was teaching at Vicky's um, master class, and she came to meet me and said, "My children have no father. Thank you for being their father." You know, and uh, that's one of the strongest statements I've heard in the whole week. He said, thank you for guiding them. He said, thank you for guiding them. Uh, a, a certain man that is a billionaire, when I say he's a billionaire, he's a billionaire. He sent me a message today. He said, I don't know where I will have been. Is that spiritual financially without you? He said, I don't know where I will have been. He said, he said I just want to say thank you. You know, and just the grace of God. Just the grace of God. You know. He said, <laughs> he said, even financially, I don't know if I'll be here. He said, it was your guidance that brought me here. Amen. Let's go into God's word. So this month, we've been talking about the word of God. We've been talking about the word. And let me tell you something. One of the things I wanted to brag about our church. You can be like, oh, our church is nice. It's cool. Music is fantastic. I wanted to brag about our church. That our church has word. Yes. Not just word. You know, there's some churches you preach. Mm, mm. Uh, what did you learn? Ah, the pastor the yarn. Powerful. What did you learn? I can't remember. Because at the end of the day, it's a lot of high sounding words that have no impact. It takes a lot of wisdom and grace for someone to teach the word. You leave the service. I can be like, wow, I actually remember one, two, three, four, five. And on Monday, I can apply that. How many of you during the week, you hear something I said in church, I want to apply it. Does it happen to you? Exactly. In fact, some of you use them in conversations to your friends. Is that not true? You know, one time I preached a message and there was a radio show and um, one illustration I used in church, the person outside in the radio, one of our choir leaders at least, he said, Pastor, well, like, this person attends our first ah. He said, you could tell that he was in the service, but he couldn't say it like you, but was trying to say, for example, he was trying to describe, but, but what I'm saying is that we must brag on the fact that we attend a Christ-centered, Bible-believing church. 
you know why? When you attend the Bible believing church, you'll be apt to deceive. You will not be going to churches they say you should put kerosene in your, in your mouth. Neither do we need to put powder on someone's face and ask them to wake up from the dead. No, we don't need to do that. The word is enough. You, we love the word. We love the word. So, so I'm, gl- I'm grateful because people that look for miracle will keep going around. And as a believer, you should not believe for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders should follow you. The Bible says, this sign shall follow them that what? Believe. You should not be the one looking for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders should be one following you. Glory to God. All right, let's get into the word of God. James chapter 1. So I'm talking about the word today. Becoming the, the transformative power of the word of God. We're meant to have a differences in the fourth service, but I'm just going to focus it on this. The next month, we'll start our full series again, which is dealing with emotional healing. I'm going to focus on that next month. So James chapter 1 in verse 21. And by the way, um, today we are feeding 1,500 families in Ikorodu. Next week, we are filling another 1,000 families in Aja. Praise the Lord. We will keep feeding and helping people as the Lord has given us the ability. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James chapter 1 verse 21. He says this. So we're talking about the word of God. We're talking about the word of God. So um, I said one of the things. So let me just lay some foundation. How do, you, how do you really know how to study the Bible? Number one, for you to want to study the Bible very well, you need a study, Bible study plan. Yeah. If you read the Bible randomly, you can never know the Bible. And if you read the Bible randomly, you're going to get up more confused than you not reading it at all. So you cannot, this cannot be your Bible study plan. Let me show you what it is. I have the word, Father. I just open like this. You, that can be your Bible study plan. And if you do that, you will notice, if you use a physical Bible, you will notice that I used to do that before, I can tell you. Every time you do that, you open the book of Psalms. Yes or no? You know why? No, so I say God speaks to me to Psalms. It doesn't speak to you to Psalms. Psalm is the center of the Bible. It's the center book of the Bible. So when you open the middle, you just open to Psalms. So if you want to know how to study your Bible, you must have a very good, you must have a very good Bible study plan. You must have a a very good Bible study plan. You must have a very good Bible study plan. The second thing is this. If you're serious with the Bible study, you must have a place to write the things you learn. Because that's the way they stay. You must learn to write the things you learn. That's the way they stay. So when you read the Bible, how do I understand the Bible? So the first thing is that there are laws of Bible interpretation. Number one, everything is said within a context. So when you read the Bible, everything is said within what? A context. So for example, um, let me give you... Um, uh, oh wow, there's so many things to... I'm just trying to see something that people say that is not right. So people say things like, you can't know what God wants, you, you can't know what God has in store for you. Someone says, you can't know God what has in store for you. And they will quote 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That the Bible says, eyes have not seen. What does it say? Ears has not heard. What? Let's go back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's just use this as an example. Glory to God. Let, let's use an example. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Yeah. See what it says. As it is written, what has happened? Eyes has not seen, neither has head heard, neither has he entered in things. So they say, you cannot know what God has for you because eyes have not seen. So, if they read this and they say that, is that true? No, but that's what it says now. Read now. Eyes have not seen nor hear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for what? So that means I do not know. But now, so someone will say that, you see, this is why we need to go and consult a prophet because you don't know what God wants for your life. But the way to interpret the Bible is to read the pretext, what is said before, and what the post-text, what is said after. Look at verse 10. Just look at verse 10. Oh. Look at verse 10. So that you can see it in full meaning. But, 
but God has what? Did you see that? If you read verse 9 alone, it said it was not revealed. But it was saying in time past, eyes had not seen, ears had not heard, neither has it been revealed. Because he was quoting that scripture from the book of Isaiah. So it was saying in the Old Testament, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. So eyes had not seen, ears had not heard, neither has it been revealed to man what God had in store for them that love him. He said, but now that when the New Testament bought God has revealed them to us. So where is the error? Once you don't read the context. So you must read things. Pre-context. Pre-text. Post-text. And context. That's how you interpret the Bible. So when someone says, gives you one big scripture. Pass. You say, thank you. Can I read three verses before? Can I read three verses on that? So just check what you're saying if it's true. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So someone says that, um, what do you call it? Um, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is not for everybody. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's read some verses before. Let's read some verses on that so that we can understand all the things. Someone says only one for 4,000 people are going to heaven. Have you heard that story before? Okay, that's great. Let's just read some verses before. Let's over. So I heard that there's a place, I know there's a place that says one for thousand people are going to heaven. But after that verse, the Bible says, and I heard the sound of a great multitude which no man was able to number. How come you just ignore the few verses after and stick with one? So when people want to do Bible deception, what they do is that they stick with one person, one place and ignore the other things that the Bible is saying. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so that's the first principle. The second thing is that this is how you understand the Bible. Is the Bible speaking literally or is it using the figure of speech? Is the Bible, this is how you understand the Bible. Is the Bible speaking what literally or using the figure of speech? So if I say to someone, um, if I say to someone, look at, look at Spyro. He's as black as Shako. Question, is Spyro as black as Shako? Is Spyro as, is, is Spyro Shako? But what I'm saying is a simile. I'm trying to use something to describe. What I'm really saying is that he's dark skinned. Is that not true? That's what I'm saying. So the Bible also contains literal statements and statements that are what a figure of speech. For example, the Bible says, um, sorry, English says, um, what do you call it? Um, um, what, I can say this also and say, um, Victor is as bold as lion. Is he a lion? No. What I'm using is a simile. A simile is a figure of speech. A simile is a figure of speech that, re- that directly compares two different things using the word like or as. In a simile, the reason for the comparison is because you are trying to emphasize certain qualities. So when you read the Bible also, you need to check, is this a literal thing or is this a figure of speech? And the reason I'm saying so is that today and last week we used something. The word of God was compared to something. It was compared to some things. And I want to read those things to you. So when you read, you know, I mean, just right there. Once you don't understand the English of the word, you will not interpret the Bible correctly. So let's read. Now, I said all of that to read this to you. Joshua chapter, sorry, James chapter 1 verse 21. All right. Are we ready? No, no, that's weak. Now, are you ready? Come on, it's my birthday. You can do better than that. Are you ready? Exactly. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. That's why my pastor she used anything to preach. Praise God. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 21. He says this Wherefore lay aside all filthiness and superflu with the obnoxiousness and receive with what? Meekness. Receive with meekness what? The engrafted word. He said, receive with meekness the engrafted word. And look what he says. He says, receive with me. He says, one, he's telling us what the posture is towards the word. He says, when you hear the word of God, submit to it. Be humble about it. Be meek about it. Some people, when you say the Bible says it, they're looking for how to defend their actions. They're looking for how to say, this is wrong. This is what I think. No, no, no. He says that, receive the meekness the engrafted word. There are two kinds of people that do wrong. There's the one person that does wrong. When you say the Bible says this, the person is humble 
and he's saying, oh God, I received your mercy, I received your grace, I received your forgiveness. But there's another person that when the person does wrong, when you say the Bible says it, well, I don't care because you don't understand what I'm going through. And one of them is like David. Every time David did something that was wrong, David was quick to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Every time Saul did something that was wrong, Saul was quick to say, you don't understand what made me do it. He was quick to defend himself. So the Bible is saying that our response towards the word must that we must what? Receive the word with meekness. And I said this earlier on. I said the word of God is not a buffet, it's a la carte. What does that mean? What does it mean the word of God is not a buffet? The word of God is not what you come to the table and you're picking and say, mm, when, it comes to, when it comes to prosperity, I take that one. When it comes to healing, I take that one. Then when it comes to decent modesty, I don't take that one. Uh-uh. The word of God is not, it's not a buffet. Everything in the world you need to do and believe. The word of God is a la carte. You say, uh, okay, let's look at the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. On, on, on protection, I received that one. When it comes to prayer, uh, no, 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 no. I don't take prayer. When it comes to attending the church regularly, no, no, I don't take that seriously. No, the word does not give you the option of saying, choose this and leave this. It's not a multiple choice option. No, everything you must answer. And the reason why I'm saying so, he says, we are in a generation where people are doing multiple choice questions with the word of God and saying, with this, I will do that. With that, I will do this. See, that's not how it works. The word of God is not, bu it's not buffet. It's a la carte. Let's say you come to church and you're struggling with pornography and masturbation and you hear teaching on pornography and masturbation. What do you do? You don't go like, um, ah, now, wow, that, that one go hard, though. Please, oh, please, please, God, I beg. You know, and he said that the reason why is that I'm already trying not to commit adultery or fornication. I'm just touching myself or watching pornography. That should, that, that's okay. You know, that's not the word of God. The word of God is that if God has a problem with it, even if I'm doing it that is wrong, then I want to change my mind. I want to repent. I don't want to defend my wrongdoing. I want to repent. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. You come to church and we begin to talk about godly dressing and modesty in dressing and saying that, you know, there's, a, there's certain things as a man or a woman you shouldn't wear because those things can be, you know, those things do not represent the value of Christ. You can't be like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. God looks at the heart. Oh. You see the thing now? God looks at the heart. Oh. You bring another scripture to justify your wrongdoing because, because you're trying to say something. You're trying to defend it. Listen to me. When you grow in Christ, some things must also grow. The length of your skirt. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Sometimes when I see some ladies, I just feel that some fashions are fashioned against me. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, I'm like, wow, that fashion is what fashioned against me. Because there's no way one can survive some things. And I tell myself, no fashion or weapon that is fashion against me shall prosper. When you come into Christ, some things must... So when they speak about dressing, don't be like, well, you know, this and this, this is my opinion. No, the word of God is not buffet. It's a la carte. Everything in the word of God is what you must do. So let's look at what the word of God says. James chapter 1 verse 20. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 20, 20, 22. He says this, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. That's the tendency of when you hear the word every time and you don't do it, you don't make a change, you begin to deceive yourself. He says this, but for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, it's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholded himself and goeth the same way and straight away he forgetteth the man of man he was. So let's look at here. Here, but the, the writer, which is James, introduced a concept that the word of God is like a mirror. Can I have the mirror? The word of God is like a mirror. Let me have the mirror. The word of God is like what? A mirror. Look at him and say, the word of God is like a mirror. Oh, that's powerful. The word of God is like a mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. Now, now what, when you look at mirror, you see something on the other side. Yes or no? So what was he saying when he said, what of God is my real? He said, the word of God has something it needs to show you. 
He says, For he beholded himself and goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was. Look at verse 25. Verse 25, look at this. It says, Look at what it calls the word of God. But whosoever looketh into the perfect love liberty. Watch this now. The word of God is a mirror, but it's not the natural mirror. The mirror of the word of God is called the perfect law of liberty. There are different kinds of mirrors. There's a natural mirror. For example, this is the house mirror. You look at it and the mirror shows you exactly who you are. It shows you who you are. If you have spots, you see the spots. If you have wrinkles, you see the wrinkles. It shows who you are. That's the natural mirror. But there's another kind of mirror called the magnifying glass. Do you know the magnifying glass? The magnifying glass, if you have a small pimples and you put the magnifying glass on it, it will make it look very big because it's a magnifying glass. But the word of God is not a natural mirror. It's not a magnif magnifying glass. It's called the perfect mirror. Why is it the perfect mirror? Because in God's word, when you look at God's word, this is powerful. You don't see who you are. Your fault is not magnified. You know what you see? You see yourself in your perfected glory. Oh my goodness. I said, oh my goodness. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. When you look at the mirror, and when I say look at the mirror, the mirror is not like, you know, when I say look at the mirror, it means when you read the word of God, what you see, God's word doesn't, it talks about you from your perfected states. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. Somebody say hallelujah. This is so powerful. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. Oh, wow. We're looking to the mirror. We're looking to the mirror. He says this. Let's read one to go. But we all with what? Open faces beholding as in a glass. What? He says, when we behold the glass, we see the glory of God. What does that mean? When I look into the mirror of God's word, what I see is myself in the glory of God. What does that mean? Here am I. I'm still dealing with my addiction to cocaine. I'm still dealing with my addiction to masturbation. But when I look into my in the mirror, I don't see the one that is struggling. I see the one that is free. Here am I. I'm still dealing with some kind of health issues. When I look into the mirror, I don't see the one that has a health issue. I see the one that is health is perfected. He says this. He says, with we all with an open face beholding as in the glass the glory of God. So the mirror of God's word is this. When I look into the word of God, I don't see myself the way I am. I see myself the way God has designed me to be. Oh, glory to God. So guess what? When someone says I am depressed, look into the mirror. Why? When you look into the mirror, the one you, you will see yourself, but you don't see yourself with a depression. You see yourself full of joy because the mirror doesn't show you the way you are. It shows you the way God has made you full of glory someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah look at him and say look into the mirror that's very powerful it says as we look into the mirror as we look into the mirror the question is that do you go out and look into the mirror most of you here this morning, you look into the mirror. But do you look into your spiritual mirror? The reason why you are so conscious of all your challenges is that you don't remember who you are. You have not looked into your mirror. Can I say something to you? If you will not leave your house every morning until you see a mirror, how can you live your life every morning without seeing the mirror of God's word? Because the mirror of God's word tells you who you are. It tells you that you are bold. It tells you you are righteous. It tells you you are confident. It tells you you are anointed. It tells you you are favored. It tells you all of these things. Glory to God. Look at him and say, look into the mirror. Very powerful. Thank you. Look into the mirror. How do you see your marriage? Is it based on what a blog says? Based on what Insta blog says? Or you see from the mirror? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself based on what others call you or you see from the mirror? The question is that it's time for you to what? Look into the mirror. Look into the mirror. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I say hallelujah. When I look into me, what do I find? Number one, this is what happens to me. God's word reveals who I am. So for example, when I listen to people, people can tell me that I'm a nobody, I'm not worth much, nobody, nothing great happens to me. That's okay. 
when I look into the mirror, the window tells me that I'm a big deal, that I'm God's best, that God cares about me, that I'm the, what do you call it, I'm engraved upon the what? On the palm of his hands, that I'm the apple of his eyes. It's before you that you think I have no value, before him I have value. The problem is that the only mirror you look at is the mirror that condemns you. You don't look at the mirror that shows you your perfection. Begin to look at the mirror that shows you your perfection so that you will live that way. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Then the most powerful thing is this. This is the most powerful thing. Let's read that 2 Corinthians 3 18 again. Are you ready? Let's read. One to go. Okay, let's read. Is that okay? Can we read now? Okay. One to go. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord wow watch this now how do i how do i change the word change there is metamorphon the word change is what metamorphon it means transformation this is what it means this is very powerful it says as i look into the mirror something happens to me see in the mirror, I see myself perfected. In the mirror, I'm full of glory. I'll give an example. On this part of town, I'm struggling. I can't raise the money. In the mirror, I have the money. In the mirror, all things are possible unto me. In the mirror, I see myself doing big things. But here am I in reality. I'm not doing those big things I see in the mirror. So what do I do? The Bible says that as we Behold, as we continue to look, it didn't say as we pray, as we continue to meditate in what we see in the mirror. It said there's something about looking into the mirror that changes our being. My God, my God, my God, praise God. I want to say it again. I'm at a stage in my life. I'm depressed. Things are not working. That's how I look. When I look at the mirror, you know what I see? It didn't say I will see myself the way I am. It said I will see myself in the glory of God. I see myself, but in the mirror when I see myself, I see myself fulfilled. I see myself joyful. I see myself expanding. So what does the apostle say? The apostle says the way I'm going to change where I am is to keep what? Looking in the mirror. So he says, but we all with open faces beholding us in the glass, the glory of God, are changed, glory to God, and change into that same image. How do I change who I am? By looking at the mirror. What does looking at the mirror means? It means meditation. It means what? meditation thank you holy spirit what's meditation how many of you have watched a movie action movie or scary movie and at night the movie showed up in your dream wave your hands let me see you know what just happened to you meditation that was meditation you 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 watch the movie so much that the movie moved into oh wow Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. You watch the movie so much that what was not you became real in your life. You watch the movie so much that they were fighting Shaolin Master. You know, all of a sudden you are sleeping, then your wife notices you going, ha! He, ho, ho. I, I, okay, I, honey, what's wrong? The movie had moved into your life. What happens is this. When you look at the word, it's only word. Though. In the word, you see God has met your needs. In the word, you see that you have the baby. In the word, you see you have the husband. In the word, you see you have the healing. You meditate on it so much. 
that when you come back to physical life what was in the world begins to show up in your life are you getting me right now so all of a sudden you are responding who 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 the wife goes what's happening meditation you have brought the spiritual reality into physical reality Somebody say hallelujah. He says the way we are changed from glory to glory is by beholding. It's by beholding. Listen to me. Be careful what you look at. Because what you look at will enter your life. I'm telling you, what will you look at will enter your life. I'm not sure, you know, um, look at today now. Today, our oldest church member, Mama, She's 100 years old. After service came and said, I was not meant to come to church today because I meant to go back to my place, which is, I think, the village. He said, but I told him I must come to church to come and wish you a happy happy birthday. And and someone said, ah, someone said, you love Mama a lot. And I said, the reason why I love her is this. This is the way I want to think about my 100 years life. The most people that I know that are 80 years old. And if you're not careful, when you think of your future, that's how you think of yourself. So when you see something that looks like what you want, go for it. Celebrate it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Why? The more we behold, the more we become. The more we behold, the more we become. The more we behold, what happens? The more we become. Let me tell you what I began to do. And I wanted to all of you in the choir, please pay attention. When I was younger, finances were quite tough. You know what I did? I would take a pen and write a check and put it in my room. All the checks I've written, they've all happened. Then one time I wrote one check and I thought this was too big. I remember when I removed the check and I said, ah, ah. It was too big when I wrote it. But the check is now too small. Why? What you behold, you become. You know the problem? I know you want to marry, but have you beheld your marriage? I know you want to, I want, you want a million dollars. Have you beheld it? Because meditation is that it will sink into your subconscious. Let me show you some examples of meditation. Are you there? Numbers chapter. Numbers. And and, and you know one of the reasons why you have to look at the mirror is this. I I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. One of the reasons why you have to keep looking at the mirror is this. You don't... One of the most painful things that can ever happen to someone is to go through life and all people meet is the damaged version of you. And I'm saying so because a lot of people, when you see them talk and behave... That's not how they were. They were damaged by life. And what you are seeing is the damaged version. Have you seen a phone that is broken before? When someone has never seen a phone before, when he sees a broken phone, the person may assume that's how the phone came originally. And it will not know it was broken. A lot of people that you think or you meet, what you have met is the damaged version. And how do you know? I'll give you a story. There were some people that came to me for counseling and this couple had come. And um, what was the problem? They were, they were, marriage was struggling. Then I discovered during the counseling that it was the father of the wife that disvirgined the wife. And the man had been sleeping with her since when she was maybe seven or eight, something like that. And because they were literally mostly girls in that family, the man was also sleeping with the other daughters. So to make their father not to be the other girls. You know what she did? She used to pull the father towards her so that at least it would be her alone that is defiled. The boyfriend told me, he said that twice I did a portion for her because her father got her pregnant. I said, what's the problem now? The problem now is that they had a big marital problem and the wife says, I will go back to my father because at least he treats me better. And this is what I'm saying to you. This is why you must make sure that what people experience in your life is not the damaged version of you. 
This is the reason why. You can be so used to damage and abuse that you find yourself returning to a place of damage and abuse because you don't know what it means to stay in a place of safety and security. And that lady, when I spoke to her, what eventually happened to her is this. She was so used to damage and abuse, she found herself returning there. And that's why sometimes you will find that people that abuse eventually become abusers. But what can fix a man is that a man gets God's word and meditates in God's word and shifts mental boundaries. Because what has happened to you? Someone says, so why do people go back to the abuse? And let me, let's be honest. Some of you are here, man. You saw your mother beaten by your father. You swore you will never touch a woman. You are not married. You are still beating your girlfriend. The reason why is that you don't become what you want. You become what you're exposed to. You were exposed to damage and you were damaged. Now you are older, you are damaged again. You are not only damaged, you are damaging other people. And the way you are going to come out of that is that you are going to have to fix it. And fixing it means that certain mental shifts must happen. And such mental shift must happen because you are exposing yourself to new things. And this is what happened. How do you become damaged? You were exposed to something. How do you heal your damage? You have to be exposed to something else. Can we talk here? There are people that want love and sincerely when they see love they do not respond. I spoke to a girl one time and she said when a man loves me I just become afraid. And I asked her have you been loved before by your father or your mother? He said that my father ran when I was young. My mother died when I was early. I can never say anybody has loved me before. I said, that's the problem. Because you don't know what love is, it's like someone speaking French to you, you will not know how to respond. Although you desire it, when you eventually find it, you will spoil it. And that's why people, you see them moving from here to there. To there. The lady said, what should I do? I said, what you have to do is this. We have to put you in an environment where you become exposed to love so that you can what? So that you can know what love is and and what respond appropriately. So I say, what do you mean? This was the thing that happened to Moses. God understood Moses was meant to be the deliverer. But if Moses was raised as a slave, a slave cannot raise another slave. So what God did was to use a system to raise Moses in the palace so that he would not have the mentality of a slave and come back to rescue them. Can I be honest with you? That's why some of you, you're joining your family. God took you out of it. The reason why is that if you were raised in that home like the others, the damage that happened to them would happen to you again. So he raised you through the backside. And you know the thing? When God finished with Moses and raised him, Moses became a warrior. And so as they talk about Israel, he killed them. God says, training is not complete. The reason why is that you've learned what it means to be a warrior to fight. But it takes a shepherd's heart. So what? To release them. So you know what God did? God sent him to Midian where he became a shepherd. Because he needed to develop a shepherd's heart. Once you understand what God is doing in your life, you will not cause some things delay again. You call them preparation. So when you see the journey of Moses, you think it was wasting time. No. God was raising a shepherd out of him. That was why when he came back, he couldn't understand how they were still in Israel because his thinking was different because it was raised differently. You just wonder, why you didn't want to go to this church? You're not going to a family church. And the reason why is that God is raising you differently. I say, ah, he's raising you differently. And it's until you bring them out before they know what has happened to them. Because it's difficult for a slave to set a slave free. Praise God. So what God does is that in his own wisdom, once he wants to step into your life, he will create a system for you to come out of that place, expose you to something else because it's another exposure you need that will change your mindset. You can go back into the system and do something else. Can we talk? Ladies, can I talk to you? There are ladies here by the training you have for you to do something significant in life, men must give you money. And that money will come through sexual help. And it's somewhere there. And what God will do for you 
is to take you to the backside of the desert when no man will help you. You will think that God is trying to damage you. No. Except the corn of wheat dies, it abides alone. You must die to the old way of thinking for a new way to emerge. If you can survive it, you will come out and understand that I don't have to sell my body to make it alive. Once you do that, what will happen to you is that as you do it, it will not be a testimony for yourself again. Even your sisters and friends will see it because you become the door, you become the potter that opens the door for others to do. Can I be honest with you? Let me hear this and hear this well. Every family and community needs someone that has done it. What? Every family and community needs somebody that has done what nobody could have done before to show them what is available to all. And my prayer is that that person will be you. Where well, you can come out and say, listen to me, I swear, and you don't have to swear, but I'm just using the figurative word. I say, I, I tell the truth with everything within me. I'm a lady. I never slept around to get what I had. It was a grace of God and work. And you look at your sister and say, that all the time you have played with me, which man did this? I said, nobody. And you tell her and said, if this happened to me, it can happen to you. That is what I call the potter's testimony. What's the potter's testimony? Where you don't just have a testimony, but you use your testimony to open the doors for other people to cross. And you must be that person that others can't cross. But let me warn you, the person that must part the way, his head will have bruises. That's why you're running away. Because you want to part the way, but you don't want your head to have bruises. The one that must part the way, his head will have bruises. But the one that passed the way, eventually when the way is parted, everybody will remember it was him that parted the way for us. The prayer you must pray is this, that the word of God will change your mind in such a way that you will become a pathfinder in your family. Stand on your feet, let us pray. Can you listen to this? All of you that are running away from hardship, stop running. The reason why is this. Sometimes, the hardship you experience is not meant to destroy you, it's meant to prepare you. The hardship you experience is meant to activate certain gifts inside you. What I've learned is that there are certain giftings that will never be activated except in hard conditions. So stop running away because in running away, you become underdeveloped. Release yourself so that the gifts can rise up. And when the gift rises up, it's over. Stop running away from hardship. The hardship is not meant to kill you. The hardship is meant to activate what? A gift inside you. As long as Joseph was in his father's house, his gift could not matter. It was when Joseph got into hardship that his gift jumped up. Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego, it was when their gift got into hardship that it matter. It is in tough times that stars arise. So tough time doesn't kill people, it's the stars that arise. Stop running away from tough seasons. It's time for the star in you to emerge. Praise God. I want you to go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory and praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we thank you. I'm praying that everyone here will be given to the word of God in such a way that it will change their mentality. I'm praying that everyone here will receive the anointing to be a pathfinder. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Relentless, relentless towards the purpose of your high calling. In Jesus' mighty name. Receive the grace to be a pathfinder. Receive a grace to be a potter in your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not back down because of hardship. You will find a way to win. And through your testimony, you will open the door for other people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your testimony with that God did it for me. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed by that? That word is specifically for those running away from hardship. Those 
run away from hardship, please pay attention. Those that are saying that, God, this is too hard. This is too painful. Why is my life so hard? Pay attention because this is for you. Praise God. God bless you. You can have your sets. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we go ahead and receive our Titan offering this morning? Let's go ahead and receive our Titan offering this morning. Let's go ahead and receive our Titan offering. Are you ready? All right, if you're giving your tight stand on your feet, if you're giving your offerings, raise them up, let's pray. If you're giving your Isaac offerings, stand and join them, let's pray. If you're giving your tight stand on your feet, let's pray. Who? Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithe and offerings before you today. We give because we love you, Holy Father. Please receive our givings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the blessing of the giver rest upon everyone giving today. And cause them to expand in every area of their finances and life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. If today happens to be your first time in Harvesters, we are excited you are here today. We've been praying that you will come and here you are today. We're excited. We're joyous you're here. If you don't mind, will you just wave your right hand above your head? My first time in Harvesters today. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just keep waving your hands. We don't want it to stand up because some people feel shy and embarrassed about it. Just keep your hands above your head. The ushers will come and give you your card. This is what you want to do with the card. I want you to give me an assignment. Give me something to pray for you about. Write your name. Write your details out. Put a prayer request there. And we'll be sure that we'll pray for you with those things you feel on the card. I believe that God brought you here. You didn't come here by chance, so in case you think you think you didn't come here by chance, it was the initiation, orchestration, movement, and arrangement of the Holy Ghost that brought you here. You look like someone I would love to pastor, and I look like someone that you love to pastor you. So it'll be nice to connect with you again and again. Feel those cards, and we'll be glad to see you again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, are you ready? Yeah. Pastor John, who's going first? You're the choir. Choir, all right. So this is a very special Thanksgiving. Hope you can thank God with me. At least I'm a year older today. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Hallelujah! Come on, uh, swim, 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 swim. Hallelujah! That's what my song. That's what my song. That's what my song will be. That's what my song. That's what your song will be. Everybody say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, let me hear you. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. One more time, say. Come and see what the Lord has done for He has taken, He has taken away my sorrow. Everybody, put hallelujah, put it. Everybody, put hallelujah, put it. Because of Jesus, every day, because of Jesus. Hey, somebody do shaka. Everybody say, ah, God, you got some blessing. Everybody. Oh, 
Oya bebe mole do 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 Oh, yeah, let me see you. Hey! Oh, yeah, let me see you. 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 Oh, yeah, Babati Mwale Ashew Oh no no Momo de wipe mare si ya yo Ayy Bokwe reye wano mi ya Come on Oh ya about what is going on, will you just shout for joy? Amen. You know, very shortly, we're going to invite Pastor Bolaji for to cut his cake, and his beautiful family will come with him. While we're yet standing, they will sit down. Um, my journey with Pastor Bolaji has been a remarkable one. Uh, there were t- I remember the first time I think Pastor Bolaji really paid attention to me, um, it was at a residence in Ikoi. We're doing this church at that time was still in formation in someone's living room in Ikoi, number 17B, Tumbo. Praise God. And it was question and answer. Pastor Blake, do you remember that day? Oh, Pastor Mommy remembers. And I, I, I spoke to him very roughly. And everybody just looked and said, What? Who is this guy? Then Pastor Blake marked me. The Bible says, Mark them that cause division. And said, They should invite me for a leader's retreat. I was not a leader. <laughs> But, you know, I really believe that um, that was God orchestrating who I will become today. But what, the morale of that story is that he was a very comfortable leader. He was comfortable enough to have someone that was not a worker, that was not a leader, to challenge him openly and still show love to that same person. And he gave me an opportunity to be all that I am in Christ Jesus today. Pastor Balaji, on behalf of all of our churches globally, I have the singular honor of just letting you know that you are very special to us. We love you so much. Um, If we had another chance, you'd still be our pastor. You know, back in the days, Pastor Balaji just showed up in your house on a Saturday morning. Let's go on a walk. What are we walking to? Prayer. He will just show up. We don't have any destination. It's just to spend time in prayer. 
So we'll go this way, we'll go that way, we'll come back that way. And it was just, I mean, all those things greer us, you know. And uh, we're just so thankful for all the things you've done. You know, if I start talking, an hour will not be enough. Two hours will not be enough. And today, Pastor Lajia has just really been a good mentor to all of us, a good coach. You know, <laughs> no, I understand why you said yes. But some of us can tell you why, what our yes means. You know, I remember the first gathering we were going to do in London. I said, Pastor B, um, this, this is what the people are saying, this and this and that. He said, oh, I agree with them. I said, so what do I teach? He said, what, what, what do you want to teach? I told him, no, don't teach that. Teach this, 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 this. Ah, I, loved, I left the place with so much joy because I just had expo. And I asked myself, how would I become the minister that I am today? How would all of us have become the ministers we are today if we didn't have expo? This is our expo, praise God. Pastor, he just knows the right word for the right time. You know, he has the right advice. He's an embodiment of knowledge. And I used to, if you think that Pastor Baji is wise because he reads the Bible a lot, you're right. If you think because he's anointed, you're right. But I'll tell you something. I've never met anyone that consumes knowledge more than him. And Pastor Baji does not read just to know. He will read to do. As he's reading, he's doing it. He can finish the book and realize that he made a mistake in the, in the process. He will correct it. He will never afraid to make a mistake, never afraid to learn, never afraid to do new things. Harvesters, will you please celebrate Pastor Bolaji? Jam your hands together for him. Thank you so much. At this point, Pastor Bolaji will please come forward with his beautiful wife, Pastor Mao Mido, and the children. they will cut the cake you know what we're going to say right we're not spelling jesus amen we're not spelling his name amen you know what we're saying take a guess somebody shout grace shout grace shout another grace can you say for the first time say this is our pastor and his family story So, Pastor Bolaji, if you put your hand on the knife, I think Pastor Bolaji and Pastor Omi can put their hands on the knife and the kids will just flank them by the sides. Shout grace! Let's jam those hands together for Jesus. Happy birthday, Pastor. Amen. At this point, um, Pastor, thank you for, for coming forward. Um, at this point, the choir will lead us. We're going to sing happy birthday together. Well, Pastor B, and um, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to.
I serve a God who is powerful. Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you for being a part of today's service, but also for participating in the celebration of our pastor. Glory to Jesus. Our prayers for you, I'm speaking on behalf of all of our pastors now, is that the sound of celebration will not cease in your own lives. Jeremiah says that out of you will proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. That will be your experience this week in the mighty name of Jesus. And remember, Next level prayers this week. Pastor Laji has declared apostolic prayers. So make sure you don't miss it. Your friends and families should not miss it anywhere they are. And if you have friends and families that live in the UK, in Europe, in Canada, and in the US, 
please encourage them to register for the next level prayer conferences in their respective countries. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Before we share the grace, I want to say a big happy birthday to Ebere. She's one of our leaders and program team as well. Um, I saw her earlier and I greeted her. But okay, that's her. Happy birthday. Can you wave again? Wave again. Let everybody see you. Happy birthday to you as well. Glory to Jesus. Look to one neighbor and say, neighbor. Say, surely. Look to one neighbor, my sister. My sister in front. Say, neighbor. Say, God's goodness and all of his mercies. They follow you all the days of your life. Say, and you. Say, yes, you. You are God's dwelling house today, tomorrow, and forever. I love you all. See you online tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.